So I saw right before the show that Stability AI launched Stable Audio 2.0. This is its uh, audio generation model. It used to create 90 second clips and you had to be a paying member. But right now what they're doing is it now creates up to three minutes of music and you, you know, you, you give it the words around the music that you want it to create and it generates something up to three minutes. You get 20 credits per month for free. And I tested a few of these and, you know, what I, what I realized in, in using them is that the generations actually, it takes two credits per generation, which I think is a little misleading. <laughs> like it must be a duration thing. I bet if I shortened the length, the duration of the clip, it would use one versus two. Um, but you do also have the ability to uh, upload your own source audio, given that the source audio is, um, is copyright free. So they do require that. Um, it's trained on data from Audio Sparks, has a library of 800,000 audio files. The owners on Audio Sparks had the ability to opt out for the training. So that gives you a little bit of a sense of um, kind of where this kind of comes from. The first clip that I did um, earlier this morning, let's see here. Does it give me the, the, yeah. So the prompt that I gave it is the overall vibe should be a fusion of pop punk energy with massive contemporary pop production anthemic Yet modern and groove-driven, the different sections should ebb and flow with dynamic changes to keep interest over the three-minute duration. That's what I asked it to do. <laughs> Let's see what it came back with. <laughs> You're the musician. I'm not. Yeah, I mean... Let's see here. Ooh, that's super poppy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so, you know, and it, it kind of has little little movements and everything like that. I think what's interesting to me where we're at right now with this is that the music AI is starting to get a better sense of structure because I feel like really early versions of this stuff felt a lot more random. You had these weird, like kind of discordant sounds paired up with each other. And there was no, you know, there's not, no, like there might be a four, four beat, you know, that we're pretty very used to hearing here in the, the Western kind of, you know, music landscape, but you wouldn't have like a section with that would be dedicated to like a verse and then something that's a little different to a chorus and then come back to the verse again and, and kind of, you know, revisit the verse. And in my playing around with it, it seems like they're getting better at understanding kind of the structure of music that is trained on anyways. And I do think that that's an advancement. Is this a song that I would listen to? <laughs> I mean, no, it's, it's got kind of a stock music quality to me. See, now we're kind of in kind of a noisier part. It has those movements and it's, you know, it's not perfect. It's not something that I would choose to listen to on a daily basis, but I do think it's, it's going somewhere. There was another thing that I did and I was like, okay, well, how does it do with like straight up like electronic music? Cause in my mind, electronic music, like house and techno and, you know, EDM and all that kind of stuff. It's almost like robotic music in essence, because it was created with electronics and so much of it is de designed around kind of the um, the rigidity of the digital machine. And so maybe that speaks the language a little better. So this is this is like a techno version and I'm gonna skip a little bit ahead in it. And I mean, you know, I, I certainly had my days of, of going dancing and stuff. I would so, I would totally hear this on the dance floor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Okay, so file that little sound that you just heard away. When I heard that little that little loop here, I'll play it again. Which sound you know, might sound to, like noise to a lot of people, but if you like techno and you like electronic music, you know that might actually sound like something similar to what you listen to. I heard that and I was like, God, I wonder what would happen if I took the product of the machine and I brought it into my own system and, uh, you know, turned it into something that was usable in my mind, you know, as far as like a kind of like a remix sort of thing. And so 
Tell me if this sounds any better. Suddenly we've got the robotic like loop in which is, you know, kind of noisy and random and whatever. And you throw a little bit of the human approach on top of it, which was, was the drums and the drum loop and everything. It took me like 10 minutes to put together. Like I would totally base a song around that. So this, this tools like this from a creativity standpoint, what we were talking about early as for earlier, as far as like, you know, how people are using these tools, this is where like, I start to get goose pimples where I'm like, instead of me searching and searching for hours, trying to find a hook that I like, or going onto a music library and finding something that, that catches my ear, like I could go into stability audio and come up with something that is, I'm going to put it in air quotes, original because nope, it's based nope. on something else, but it's but it's based on something else that the end result is something that no one else has. You know, I don't think that you could get this system to create that loop again. Um, I think that's I think that's kind of compelling. As a musician, yeah. I find that compelling. Well, always in these cases, I've said it earlier in today's show. The more yeah. this stuff is used as a tool for creativity in our hands, the happier I am. The mm-hmm. the, the the more benefit we get out of it, the the um, the 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 safer it is. Uh, safer is the wrong word, but, but yeah, the more, yeah. more secure we can be in what it does, um, and we use it. I at some point I hope we can have on a guy named Lev Manovich. I think I mentioned in the past, um, who does a lot of work. He's at, at the uh, CUNY Graduate Center on um, art and AI and art and technology and how people use it. And I think that mm-hmm. that it is just a tool. That's all it is. And it, when it's used that way, that's really appealing and um so yeah i don't think the music's so good but i'll be curious as you play with this jason whether with your musical knowledge how prompting can improve it uh same yeah. way as i don't know how to do it with with I, I i did some funny stuff i'm giving a talk um tomorrow in washington at the iapp which stands for something about privacy professionals and i asked um i should have sent these images to you but i'll send them to you for next week I asked a couple of the uh, uh, generative AIs to come up with the literate machine or the internet that's connected or things like that, and and there's some pretty funny images. But I don't I don't know how to instruct it well for mm. in the language that people would use around drawing and illustration and art to get what I want. Mm-hmm. And you know that around music, so it'd be interesting to to see you really play with this and try to get it to produce something that you really think is good. As yeah. opposed to uh, interesting for a machine. Yeah, interesting for a machine. I mean, yeah, I mean that that little clip, like I, I could totally, you know, get get behind that. I will fully admit, though, like how did I come up with a prompt? I, I was like, God, where do I even begin with a prompt on this? I went into perplexity and I said, Hey, create me a short prompt separated by commas that is a house music track that has some ethereal, you know, kind of energy and pads. And like, I, I, it's like, I gave it a starting prompt idea. And then I asked perplexity to kind of give me a little bit more around that. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a word for this. I know there's a, there's a certain word for using an LLM to create a prompt for another LLM. And I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, And then that is what I fed into stability which is a whole other can of worms where it's like, you know, it's not purely me, but it's me collaborating with the machine to come up with the, uh, the prompt that informs this other machine to do these things. And I don't know. It's, it's, it's really kind of cool. Yeah. It's very, it, it, it tickles my need, my desire to be creative, uh, in, in creative ways. (laughs) 